Welcome to today's five good minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Jonah with Kurt Bjorklund. In Jonah chapter four, the structure of the chapter has God asking three questions around three different scenarios. The first is Jonah being angry that God relents from destroying the Ninevites. And so God just says, do you have any good reason to be angry? The second is this question, do you do well to be angry for the plant? And there's almost this comical incident. Here's what it says. Verse five, Jonah went out of the city and sat east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat in it under the shade till he should see what would become of the city. So he He's upset. He goes out and he sits on the side and says, I'm hoping that the city will be destroyed, basically. Now, the Lord God appointed a plant and he made it come up over Jonah and it made it to be shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. Now, this is is significant in this way, and that is this is it is a way. Uh, well, first, the the. Context is desert. Think Middle East today, sitting outside, no shade. And now God appoints this plant to give him shade. Shade in that context is immense. And it says to to save him from his discomfort. And by the way, this word discomfort is the word that is often used for evil uh, throughout um, the book, uh, Ra. And so it's a play on words here. It saves him from his discomfort, but to save him from his evil. And then it says this, and Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. And when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm and attacked the plant so that it withered. And when the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, it's better for me to die than to live. So now he asked to to die again, says, I'd rather die. And that's when God says, do, do you do well to be angry for the plant? And Jonah says, yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And this is something that reveals almost a pettiness and, and a sense of, uh, of not understanding the heart of God, because here God expresses compassion. And don't miss this word, God appointed. This shows up in... Verse six, God appointed a plant. It shows up in verse seven, God appointed a worm. And it shows up in verse eight, God appointed a scorching east wind. One commentator in in talking about this says that this God appoints calls attention to the fact that the name of God changes with each occurrence of this verb. So, so first, the appointing of God is Yahweh in chapter 117. Then in verse 4-6, it's Yahweh Elohim. Then in verse 4-7, it's Ha Elohim. And then in verse 4-8, it's Elohim. And here's what he said. It may be accidental that the narrator reaches this particular progression or scheme, but we can nevertheless observe a move from the most, Yahweh, to the least, Elohim, personal of God's name. Uh, Why would this be important? Because what's happening here is as Jonah is becoming infuriated with this plant and God appoints and God appoints, it's almost as if there's, there's a sense in which God says, you are depersonalizing me because you want what I give, not me. You want me to give you a plant and you're happy about that and not about people who've repented and it shows that 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 you're disconnected and here's probably part of what this could mean to you to me and that is when we evaluate our world through circumstances and our happiness goes up and down with our circumstances and we blame god in some way for what is or isn't there's a sense in which we're missing the grander picture and the personal nature of the way in which God is working. This can have all kinds of implications for the way we live, but at a minimum, it shows a pettiness when we say, God, why did you give me the plant and then take it away? Instead of saying, God gives, God takes away, either way, the name of the Lord 
is to be praised. I bless the name of the Lord. Today, where are you tempted to be petty with your circumstances? And what would it look like to arrange your way of thinking around the priorities in the heart of God? Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day. 